Hello and welcome to PlayStation Access and a video in which I, Nathan, attempt to guide you through Demon Souls. Despite having snuffed it enough times to have the words you died seared onto my eyeballs. Learn from my mistakes people and you will soon be getting the most from one of the year's finest games. A glorious return for the groundbreaking PS3 classic, spectacularly remade for 2020 and for PlayStation 5. If you are entirely new to Demon's Souls, it's a classic slice of swords and sorcery as your hero is called to the kingdom of Boletaria to deal with a terrible demon unleashed by the king. Oh, the king. Really, it's an excuse to do battle with some of gaming's most legendary slash evil level designs as you purge knotty dungeons and drag your very fragile health bar through hulking boss encounters. Unlike many games, it's all about patience and treating the challenge with the respect it deserves. If you come away with one piece of advice, it's that hasty knights are not rewarded in Demon's Souls. Luckily, I've got more than one piece of advice, so here are my words of wisdom to avoid the same fate as me. My first tip is a general one about progress and the approach of Demon Souls in general. It's not always easy to know where you're supposed to be going or, when you suffer a setback, whether you're making any progress at all. So bear in mind, Demon Souls is not a conventional game where progress through levels is necessarily the best marker of moving forward. Every time you die or return to the Nexus hub world, levels are repopulated with enemies. Real progress comes in the form of advancing your character, collecting souls and leveling up. It also comes in the form of beating bosses. These bigger enemies stay dead and mark the most obvious progression through the world. But even opening a shortcut, making your journey through a level to that boss, is a big win. So is finding new items and gear. You keep these even after death. So savour every victory and learn to recognise when you're moving forward, even when it might not feel like it. Before trying to survive Boletaria, you need a survivor. Demon's Souls has versatile character creation. You can really mould anyone into anything with later levelling. That said, some classes are more beginner friendly than others. The biggest mistake I made was being lured by enigmatic descriptions and ignoring the stats and equipment that really define them. For my second tip, I'd recommend either Royalty or Temple Knight. Royalty has a ranged spell and a ring that refills magic, letting you zap monsters from afar while you find your feet in melee combat. That means you can avoid deadly close encounters without counting ammo, a big help for new players. If you're feeling a little more confident, the Temple Knight has great stats for wading in and starts fully armoured with a chunky halberd and a shield. Speaking of shields, tip number three and the best single lesson for surviving Demon Souls is to make quick friends with this lump of steel. It costs nothing to hold block as you explore, but it saves you from nasty surprises. You see, Demon Souls is a big fan of ambushes. Dredglings lurch through destructible scenery or lurk inside doorways and around corners. Most things attack fast and hard, so stepping into any enclosed space with the shield raised should become second nature. Of course, blocking a hit depletes stamina, so do step back and let it refill. Stamina recharges faster when you aren't blocking, so lower the shield once you've got a bit of distance. Shields are also integral for tip number four, using blocking to learn enemy behavior. Every fiend in Demon Souls has its own rhythm and moves, and the best way to study those is to let them take their fury out on your shield. So many deaths happen because you wade in without knowing what to expect. Hold block and you get a feel for attack animations and timings. Remembering as before to step away and recharge stamina as you go. Of course, the temptation is to parry moves with a last minute block as you can then counter with a powerful repost. But early on, where a single hit can send you to the grave, parry timing is risky. Holding block is safer and you'll make swift progress as a result. My fifth piece of advice may seem very obvious to veterans of titles cut from the same cloth as Demon's Souls, but your odds of survival increase massively if you can keep combat to one-on-one -on -one encounters. Here there's no item for pulling enemies or luring them away, so you need to catch their eye by edging forwards and moving back. This is ideal for drawing melee creatures away from ranged defenders so you can sword fight without arrows and bombs being rained on you. Also, as you explore claustrophobic rooms, it's smart to draw attackers back to more open spaces or just forcing gangs of skeletal warriors to squeeze through doorways one by one. Basically, get the fight working on your terms, because Demon Souls will not play fair if you let it. 
Number six, Demon's Souls gives you considerable freedom after a point. When you first die, you appear in the Nexus, which as mentioned, acts as a hub world for the wider game. Around the staircase are five arch stones, each leading to a self-contained world with a big arch demon waiting to turn you into paste at the end. But before you can freely explore, you need to beat the first part of the first location, the Boletarian Palace. Defeating the boss here, basically a rotten trifle sprinkled with medieval weaponry, opens the next bit of the palace and the remaining four arch stones back in the Nexus. Don't feel you need to tackle each world in its entirety. Part of the fun is dipping in to earn souls or sniff out items to assist in other areas. Feel free to chart your own path through the game and its world. Beating the first boss also welcomes the Maiden in Black to the Nexus. Brave soul, for whom death is no fear. She uses souls from vanquished enemies to level you up. Tip number seven is to focus on leveling over other purchases. Don't waste souls on items, for example. And when you do level up, don't spread it too thin. I prioritize vitality and endurance as they boost health and stamina, which are the two key ingredients for my patented cower behind a shield playstyle. And then I spend on strength. So when I do pop out from behind my shield, the pointy end of my sword is that little bit pointier. Of course, you can conjure up so many interesting builds with different stats, but for a nice, reliable trip, through Boletaria for the first time, these picks will do nicely. The cruel twist at the heart of Demon's Souls is that when you die, you drop your souls and have your next life to return to your point of demise to reclaim them. As such, tip number eight is to be aware of how many souls you need for your next level. You can see this number when you talk to the Maiden in Black. This way, once you hit the required amount, you can teleport back to the Nexus from the nearest Archstone to cash them in. You can also top up your souls by consuming soul clusters you loot from the world, but make sure to only consume these when you're ready to make the purchase. Crack open some souls in hostile territory and you risk losing them, whereas the soul item is safe in your inventory no matter what happens. On a similar note, and let's call this number nine, when you kill a boss, you earn its demon soul, which can be consumed for loads of souls. But these are also unique items required for certain upgrades or purchases, so resist the temptation to scoff them down. As the saying goes, a moment on the lips, a lifetime of forlornly looking at weapons you can no longer upgrade. I think that's a phrase anyway. Speaking of equipment, I suggested you shouldn't spend souls to buy items. That's because most things can be found by scouring the world for loot. But number 10, you do have to be careful about filling your pockets. There's a limit to your carry capacity in Demon Souls. Two things to note here. Use your limited inventory to commit to who you are. If you're using swords, don't fill your pockets with bows. If you favor magic, don't get bogged down with spears. Resist the temptation to hoard and stick to your stabby, slashy, burny lane. As for items you aren't sure about, you can store equipment in the Nexus by talking to Stockpile Thomas. I'm Stockpile Thomas. Probably the most aptly named character in all the video games. At the very least, I hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons. Number 11. Death comes at a high price in Demon Souls and dying puts you in a soul form with half your maximum health. You can revert to a healthier human body by defeating a boss or with an item called the Stone of Ephemeral Eyes, but doing the first is hard and finding the second is rare. One item that really helped me is the Cling Ring, which gives more health in soul form and handily is found early in the game. It's on a body in the first section of the Boletarian Palace. Once you reach the top of the battlements, run all the way to the right and descend the tower. At the bottom is a portcullis switch and the body you need. Bad luck for this guy, good luck for us. And while we're <coughs> inheriting some property, this location also hides a great opportunity to improve inventory capacity. So number 12, climb the tower above the cling ring body and you'll find a ledge with two chains. Slashing these drops two bodies in the courtyard below and one carries the jade hair ornament. Next time you're in the Nexus, talk to Stockpile Thomas and he'll spot the trinket and swap it for the Ring Darling. of Herculean Strength that increases weight capacity by 50%. Would you mind giving me that hair ornament? I'd like to have it in memory of my daughter. It's kind of grim that Thomas's family had to suffer for this prize, but so it goes in the unhappy world of Demon Souls. Now, to tell you more would rob some of the magic of Demon Souls. Secrets are its currency, and it's a world to be uncovered, deciphered, and conquered. 
but I hope these pointers for the first few hours of the game will give you a foothold ready to explore this incredible rebuilt experience. So please do like this video if it's got you ready and raring to go and let us know in the comments the kind of hero you plan to build. Please do subscribe to PlayStation Access and hit the notification bell so you know when fresh batches of video adventure are waiting for you. Thanks for watching and see you soon. PlayStation.